So in our last example, uh, we determined the amount of ammonia we can make theoretically in grams uh, based on our two reactants. And one of the reasons why I wanted to go to grams in this pro problem because a lot of times in the laboratory, you're going to want to figure out how much uh, product you actually make. Uh, this is just your theoretical yield. This is the maximum amount uh, possible that you can make. Uh, it turns out you're probably not going to make uh, that much um, uh, product. You know, for a variety of reasons, you know, you just don't ma always make as much product as uh, you or could possibly um, make. Okay, we can even go back to the pizza analogy to think about this, okay? So let's say, so I had four crusts, 15 ounces of the sauce, um, and 10 cups of cheese. I could theoretically make three pizzas. But what happens if I accidentally uh, leave one in the oven too long and it, it's burnt, okay? Well then, I actually only made two pizzas. The third one was burnt, okay? And so in reality, I didn't make as many pizzas as I theoretically could have, all right? The same thing happens in chemical reactions. Um, you just things happen and you don't make as much um, product as you possibly can. There could be side reactions, you got to buy products. If you have to filter material, you might lose some in the filtering process. And so you're not always going to make as much product as you theoretically could. This is called the actual yield. So the actual yield is the amount of product of product. that is made in a chemical reaction. Okay, and you can't calculate this. This is done in real life. And so this has to be determined experimentally. Now a, uh, another calculation that we're going to want to do to put the actual yield in perspective is the percent yield. All right. And the percent yield is, uh, as it, you know, its name implies, so I always abbreviate this percent yield. Okay. So the percent yield is just the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100%. And this puts the actual yield in perspective with these starting materials. Okay. So again, we can go back to the pizza example. Okay, let's say I made, uh, I had enough material for three pizzas, um, and I burnt one and I only made two. So that's two out of three, 66.7, 67% uh, yield. Okay, okay, that's a percentage. But what if I worked at a pizza shop and I had enough starting material to make 100 pizzas, but I only made three? In each case, I made three pizzas, but the percent yield at the pizza shop was three out of 100, or only 3%. And so the percent yield puts things into perspective. And so it's a very common calculation. Um, and so the, uh, the normal uh, calculation or experiment you're going to do is uh, you calculate the theoretical yield based on your starting material, and then you measure the actual product you make, and then you put it in terms of percentage. The theoretical yield calculation is going to be just like the uh, ones we did previously, usually a mass-to-mass um, you know, -mass conversion vector. Okay, so let's do an example. What is the percent yield of a reaction if 12.35 grams of aluminum chloride is produced from 4 grams of aluminum and 12 grams of chlorine? Okay, according to the following balanced chemical equation. All right, so uh, what are we going to do here? First, we need to think about what these numbers are. Okay, so my reactants are aluminum and chlorine. And so these are the starting materials. We have four grams of aluminum and 12 grams of chlorine. My product is aluminum chloride, and it says I produced 12.345 grams. Okay, so that, that, if I produce that, that is my actual yield. Okay, and I'm going to need that to calculate my percent yield. So my percent yield, again, is going to be actual yield over theoretical yield. And so one of the first things i got to do is calculate the theoretical yield. I've already done an example of that, so it should be pretty straightforward. What we're going to need to do is figure out how much product I can make from each of my reactants, both aluminum and chlorine. Okay, And so again, I'm going to go from grams of reactant to moles of reactant. 
And I need to do that because my balanced chemical equation is a molar relationship. And so then I'm going to go from moles of reactant to moles of product. And then, since I want to compare it to my actual yield, which I measured in grams, I'm going to go from moles of product to grams of product. Okay. All right. So, let's start off with aluminum. So, I got four grams of aluminum. I'm going to figure out how many grams of aluminum chloride I can make. Now, of course, first things first, I got to convert to moles. So, one mole of aluminum, 26.98. Grams of aluminum. Grams cancel. Now, when I go to moles of my product, I of course need to look at my relationship. In this case, it's a two to two uh, molar relationship. And so, that's good. give me the same number. I still need to do it, just keep my unit straight. So, two moles of aluminum give me two moles of my product. And then I need to convert to grams of product. Normally, I'd convert, calculate the molar mass. In this problem, they uh, actually give it to us. The formula weight molar mass is of aluminum chloride is 133.34. So, on one mole of aluminum chloride, we'd have 133.34 grams. Grams cancel. Moles of aluminum previously canceled, and I set that. Conversion product oh, grams didn't cancel, did it? So I need to put one mole of aluminum chloride on the bottom, 133.34 grams on the top, and that is how moles will cancel, and of course giving me my final units of grams of aluminum chloride. All right, so now on my calculator, I'm going to take 4 divided by 26.98 times 2 divided by 2 times 133.34. And that gives me 19 point, well, how many sig figs do I need? 4 sig figs, so that's going to be 19.77 grams of aluminum chloride. Now that's of course how much aluminum chloride I can make from aluminum. I gotta figure out how much I can make from chlorine to figure out which one's my theoretical yield. So now I'm gonna start out with my 12 grams of chlorine and figure out how much aluminum chloride I'm gonna make. All right, so mole, grams to moles and then one mole of chlorine Chlorine's another diatomic, so that's 35.45 times 2, so that's going to give me 70.90 grams. Grams cancel. Now to convert to moles of aluminum chloride, moles of my product, I need to look at my coefficient. So this says 3 moles of chlorine makes 2 moles of aluminum chloride, so I'm going to put 3 moles of chlorine on the bottom, 2 moles of aluminum chloride on top. Moles of chlorine will cancel. And now one final conversion. Uh, again, I'm just going to use the same molar mass of aluminum chloride. And one mole of, of aluminum chloride has 133.34 grams. Moles cancel, giving me grams. And so in my calculator, I'm going to take 12 divided by 70.90 times 2 divided by 3 times 133.34. And that's going to give me 15.05 grams of aluminum chloride. Now again, for this equation, for this calculation rather, I'm going to have to look at this and it says I can either make 15.05 grams of aluminum chloride or 19.7 grams of aluminum chloride. How much can I really make? Well, I can only make the least. The theoretical yield is always the least. 
And so once I make 15.05 grams of chlorine, I'm gonna run out of chlorine, or excuse me, once I make that amount of product, I'm gonna run out of chlorine. So chlorine is my limiting reactant. And so that's my theoretical yield. Now that I know my theoretical yield and the problem gave me my actual yield, I can calculate my percent yield, okay? Percent yield is just always actual yield over theoretical yield times 100. So my actual yield is 12.345 grams divided by 15.05 grams of aluminum chloride, which is what I could get theoretically, times 100%. And so in my calculator, 12.345 divided by 15.05 times 100 is 82.03%. All right, so I did a couple of mass to mass conversions to figure out which one was my theoretical yield. And then I just plug that theoretical yield into my percent yield calculation. Actual yield has to be measured. Um, and so we uh, figured, we looked up that information in the problem and calculated my percent.